Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today, we're going to talk about the brand new Switch model just announced from Nintendo. Now, if you follow Switch news at all, you know that Switch Pro rumors have been around for quite a while. But over the last few months, especially ramping up to E3, you could not go a day without someone else popping out a new rumor video about a Switch Pro hitting. Well, today, Nintendo finally announced a new model of the Switch. Only thing is, I don't think it's exactly the Switch Pro that a lot of people were hoping for. But nonetheless, it is going to be a decent refresh on the Switch we already know about, so we're still going to go today over the particulars of what this model does, and actually also what it doesn't do that a lot of people would have wished it did. Now you probably already noticed in the background the trailer playing for this new Nintendo Switch model that was just announced that Nintendo is calling the Nintendo Switch OLED model. Now we won't look at the whole trailer, but I will be leaving it down in the description of the video if you want to check it out for yourself after the video. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the official website for this new Nintendo Switch model in just a couple of seconds. But just before we do that, I just want to remind you all that if you like the content, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. So as promised, here we are on the official website for the Nintendo Switch OLED model. And I'll be leaving the link down below as well to this website, but you can also see it in the address bar up above. Now, first thing that's going to hit you about this Nintendo Switch model, yes, there is going to be a price difference. The old Switch's MSRP was $299. This one is going to have an MSRP of $349. Now, I personally, being a Canadian, I'm really looking forward to see what this translates to in Canadian money, because already, just for your knowledge, if you don't already know, a Switch here costs $400, not $300, which is way more than the current exchange rate. So I'm really hoping that for other regions, Nintendo doesn't just slap on extra tax like they did the last time. I'm really hoping that this model comes out around the 450 to like 470 mark, because if they try to go all the way up to 500, I do think that it'll have a hard time selling outside of the US. Now, if we move on just from the price, let's go take a look first at what Nintendo is doing to upgrade this model before we talk about the things that maybe Nintendo didn't do to this model, as I said earlier, that a lot of people were hoping for. So number one, they're doubling the internal memory. They're going from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes, which honestly is an upgrade that really needed to happen. Because let's be honest, almost everyone buying a Switch first purchase you're going to do after maybe a game or two is an extra micro SD card. Having 64 gigabytes of internal memory isn't the best. Most people will still want a memory card, but especially if you're buying the Switch, you don't know how many games you're going to be buying. Maybe this is a family unit, you're trying it out, seeing if you like it. At least you can get by for probably a little while with just the internal memory alone. Next, however, let's switch to the biggest biggest change that they're doing, they're switching the screen to an OLED screen, which overall will probably give a much better visual quality than the current screen that we have. But not only that, we're going from 6.2 inches to 7 inches in diameter. Doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, when you're going to see it in your hands, a 0.8 inch difference is going to be a huge difference, especially that from what we see, the size of the Nintendo Switch itself is remaining the same. All they're doing is they're trimming down the bezels, which are on the original Nintendo Switch are a little bit too big. So a lot of people were asking for trimming down those bezels. That's what we're getting here. And we're getting an extra 0.8 inches with a better quality screen. This is going to be the biggest upgrade that we're getting in this new refreshed model. Now, next, right below it is probably one of the best quality of life upgrades we're getting in here. And I'm saying one of the best because there's another one coming right down the road, but we're getting a much better switch stand. Look, the kickstand on the original switch works, but it is the bare minimum you need to hold your switch up. Everyone that I know that normally plays with your switch in tabletop mode has bought a separate stand for the switch because you can't trust that kickstand. If someone moves the table that you're playing on or anything like that, first thing that happens, your switch slams down on the table. Now with this kickstand that looks much more like a surface tablet, it is going to be much safer, but not only that, we can actually choose 
different angles for your viewing, which is going to be a huge upgrade for someone playing in tabletop mode. And we're going to get back to that a little bit later because I think that there's a definite direction that Nintendo is going with this Switch refresh. Now next we have the other quality of life upgrade, which is the built-in LAN port. And this is about time that it's happening. Me, for all my Switch docks, I had to buy separate dongles to be able to connect them to a LAN port. If you game a lot online, you know that generally a connection through a LAN port is going to be much more stable than Wi-Fi. Even if you have good Wi-Fi, overall, there is more stability. And I think that Nintendo is finally realizing that they're getting a lot of online games and that a lot of developers were probably asking for this. Because when people complain about the experience that they get on their Switch and online mode, well, sometimes it has to do with the Wi-Fi that they're playing on. And not everyone is tech savvy enough to know that you can actually buy a USB dongle and get an Ethernet connection. And personally, having tried it myself, there are some doggles that aren't compatible, meaning that there is a little bit of trial and error there. Now, the internal storage we talked about a little earlier. I thought that it was one of the main points I wanted to bring up because to me, it is a very good change. And the last one we're getting, and this is really going, I'm, I'm going to want to hear it to basically realize what's happening here. We have what they're calling enhanced audio. I don't know, I'm getting a feeling all it is is bigger speakers, but once we actually get this thing in hand, we'll realize if the audio coming out of the Switch is actually that much better. But overall, it is an upgrade, so nonetheless, we're going to talk about it. So now we get to the bottom of the page concerning the Nintendo Switch OLED model, and they talk about the three modes in one. And this is an important part that I wanna take a few seconds to talk about, because we're gonna talk about those three modes. By the way, I, you probably see, yes, the page does go lower, but after that, it's just marketing stuff. It's basically nothing new about the model itself. And that's the fact that Nintendo is still putting a lot of emphasis on the fact that the Switch is playable in three different modes, TV mode, tabletop mode, and handheld mode. Something pretty much everyone already knows. But there's something I wanna take notice of in this upgrade pattern. And that's the fact that basically, other than the addition of the LAN port, none of these upgrades really benefit the TV mode at all. And that is probably going to be the biggest disappointment for everyone because everyone was expecting Nintendo to do something about outputting 4K with the Nintendo Switch, a better processor, maybe the dock helping out or whatnot, just upscaling the games to 4K, which unfortunately is not happening in this refresh. But more than that, I think that what's important to take notice is that Nintendo is really pushing these upgrades towards a better tabletop and handheld mode experience. Basically, Nintendo is putting all their eggs in the basket of pushing the tabletop and handheld mode. Now, I do think that this has to do with a marketing strategy. Currently, they know that the Nintendo Switch, even if it starts out putting 4K, isn't going to compete with a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. So why try and push that side of the console when what you can do is really push the handheld side and go get even more of that market share of the people that appreciate the three modes. Now, I personally would have loved to see the 4K, but I can see where their strategy is going with this. However, I do still think that if they want third party developers to keep porting a lot of their next gen games to the Nintendo Switch, we're going to have to eventually get something to power up the Switch. Because so far, everything points to this being the exact same chipset as currently is used in the Switch, meaning that we're not really going to get a better experience on the games we're already playing in TV mode. The only thing is that people who play in tabletop mode and handheld mode will definitely get a better visual experience just because of a better quality screen. Now maybe we'll get a surprise because I didn't see an official confirmation from Nintendo that does say officially this is the same chipset as was used earlier. So maybe we can still get a little surprise and there be a very tiny performance upgrade without Nintendo wanting to bank on that one point. But if not, we can always wait for a teardown when this thing releases. But nonetheless, I do think this is some important information about the Switch. It's not the Switch Pro I would have wanted. I would have definitely gone for that 4K. But you know what? Nonetheless, I will be picking this up on October 8 when it launches with Metroid Dread, which I cannot wait to release. And we'll just see what this new Switch has to offer. 
So let me know in the comments down below, are you going to be picking up this new Switch or is this a refresh that you're going to skip over? And on the way out, don't forget that if you did like this content, as I said earlier, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.